What's up, everybody? Happy Saturday. So, I'm actually sitting here waiting for my family to get back. I have family in town. My sister is in from Philly with her daughter, my niece. And my dad, who um, is with them, is driving them around to go get some stuff. And then we're going to the beach. So I'm just waiting for them to come so we can go do that. But um, I've had two sessions this morning that brought up really beautiful things that I want to share with you guys, as I always do. So if you're on here, say hello so that I know you're here. Hi, Rich. Um, this thing... Human message, right? We're humans. We always have something that we want to share. Humans want to connect. It's our nature. We love to connect. Even if you don't think you want to connect and you're introvert, we have this thing where we want to touch and to hear and to, to know that we're not alone in things, right? So my belief is that we all have a message. And what I found from working with my clients is that there's always something that you want to share. For you to come and call me and want to work together, there's something telling me that you have something that you want to get out to the world. Now, whether you're ready to do that or not is something else, right? So I asked my client this morning, I said, she said, I don't know if it's fear or divine timing. Like, what is it that's holding me back? Is it fear or is it just that I want to take a break? What is it? So I said, okay. The difference between divine timing and fear is that with fear, there's resistance. You're feeling like, I don't know if I can do this or I don't know if I feel like doing it and it feels heavy and it's and, and it's it's different, right? There's a level of discernment that you know once you begin to do the work inwardly, right? But I said, okay, so let's get clear on this. Do you have a message right now? Do you have a message of something you want to share with the world? And then she said, yeah, I do. So right away, she knew her message. So we get clear on her message and there's this this group of people that she wants to work with specifically. So we get down and we start talking about, you know, I have her sit down on the beach and she starts writing this out. And I said, okay, so who are you going to help with this message? Who needs to hear the message? So she starts writing it out and she has like a whole list of people like women that need to hear this. And then I said, okay, so how could you deliver this message? What is it? What are these things? And we get really clear and we do this whole process. And then at the end I said, so you recognize, you recognize that there's these people that are suffering because you don't want to share your message. And we may not think about that, right? Because when we have these ideas, we just dismiss them as I'm not good enough or I'm not ready or I don't have the money or who's going to buy this from me or how am I going to connect with people? But the reality is this, that if there's people that need you, then who are you to not step up and share it? Hi, Poppy. Hi, Lydia. So... Who are you not to step up and share it? And the thing is, if there's one person that needs you and you feel like you're not good enough to share, you're basically looking at what God has given you and you're saying, sorry, it's not good enough. So you have to recognize your gifts and see them as such. If you don't recognize your gifts, you're always going to keep them in the back of the closet like they're nothing. Or you start to express them and unleash them because you know that there's someone that needs you. So I believe everyone does have a message. So you have to ask... Poppy, thanks for sharing the video. You have to ask, what is my message, right? Like, I always knew that there was a message within me that I wanted to share with other women. The message of my old self. I remember being in this emotional prison where I just felt like I was never going to have anything, never going to be anyone. I had all of these bad things that happened to me, and I just labeled myself as broken and not working, right? Like, it's just not going to work for me. I ruined this lifetime because I did all these bad things before I was age 26, right? And I just thought, like, now my life is now ruined. Oh, too bad I don't get another one. And then I woke up and realized, oh, my God, my life is just beginning. There's so much I can do. And then everything shifted, right? I helped so many children. I helped so, so many women now. So, so many good things have come because I recognize that. But then I knew my message. So if you don't know your message and you feel unfulfilled by the work that you're doing, it's because there's a song inside of you that you're not singing. And are you willing to sing the song? If you're not willing to sing the song, why not? Lydia, thanks for sharing the video. Um, so what is the song? Like, what is that song that you want to sing? If you're on here and listening to this, I would love to know, like, what is your message to the world? I have to make sure that all of my clients are very clear. What is your message? When you get out and talk to the world, what are the three things that they must know? What are the things that like wake you up and keep you up at night? And if you're not sure, but you're feeling down or feeling depressed or feeling anxious, that song is seeking to express, but you're not really listening for it yet. So 
Poppy, I believe everyone has a message too. I shared the message of my old self. You beauty. Thank you. Thank you. Um, love you. Thank you so much. Yeah, the thing is, is like we have to share it even though some of these things suck, right? Like it feels, ugh. But once we share, it frees us because we're like, oh, this thing is not me. I identified myself as this for so long, but it's really not me. And you know, my sister's here and... Um, she last night was really sweet and she just said, I'm really proud of you for everything that you've created. And she asked for my help with some things and I'm like, yeah, now I can't wait. I'm going to take her to the crystal store and we're going to do all these things. But it's like my raising up and saying yes has been a yes for other people. Your yes is going to be a yes for other people. It's going to be a yes for everyone around you. Even if in the first like, you know, few months, few years that you say yes to yourself and there's this shift and people are adjusting to this new version of you eventually they come through eventually they understand eventually they step up and say you know what I deserve more too I am more than this too but it takes you first so if even in the beginning your message is just I'm going to say yes to me if that's just your message that's enough I'm going to say yes to me there's something within me that is greater than I can understand. I don't know what it is, but I know there's a reason that my heart is beating. I know there's a reason that everyone's heart is beating. I know there's a reason for all of this that I don't quite understand. I don't have to know where I'm going. All I have to know is that I'm saying yes to this presence. I'm saying, and if I do say yes, so much beautiful, so much beauty, so many great gifts are going to come. Yes, Kyle, what's up, Kyle? Be the example by owning your light. Can we own it? So it's like even today I shared that um, message. I'm on the beach this morning and I have to get my clients, some of them used to this because I've gotten used to acting really weird at the beach and just acting weird in life because I understand that we're all just like toddlers in on this planet and we're just kind of exploring. We may grow up and we may be labeled with all these like ages, you know, but like I say F that. I'm not going to be that anymore. Hey, Ashley. I decide that I'm just going to explore and I'm going to feel myself and be free and feel what life has to give me. And when my clients come to work with me, sometimes we have to like work on that. So we're at the beach, we're holding hands. There's these people training for a triathlon. So they're walking past us. And um, I told her, I said, just like, and we're meditating. And I said, just like these people are walking past us right now. These are the same things. These thoughts, rep these people represent our doubt, fears, and worries. And they come passing through our awareness. Can we stay focused on our intention and I said like you know we go through the meditation I said wasn't that beautiful um yes Nicole message me because you know what you should see what I posted the other day I said spirit has no black white this box is the only box of people you can work with if people feel called to work with me and they need to work with me there might be something custom that we can create I don't know but my thing is I'm here to serve right now so if it feels good for me then I'm open to it. But I say let life guide us, right? So back to the beach thing, because this is really funny. Standing on the beach and just standing there and meditating like that with your eyes closed and having the trust to allow a whole group of people that you haven't even seen what they look like walk right past you in front of you and back of you and have them speaking to like speaking and walking and just keep your eyes closed and just focus on that intention of connecting with the presence. That is amazing, right? So we just had this really beautiful practice of doing that this morning. And then in the next later closing affirmation prayer that we did, we're holding hands and then we're hugging and I'm like, I love you. And this guy's looking at us like, what the hell are you guys doing? Like he literally stopped in the stand to look back and then kept walking and stopped again. And I'm like, this is why we're just, we're not weird. We're woke, right? Um, Kyle, the ego can be scared of simplicity and being toddler-like, even though it can be such a natural state. It's true. I mean, it did. This was not an overnight thing for me. This was, guys. This has been years in the making for me, right? The more I step out and say, I don't, I'm not living for anyone else but me, and beyond me, just living for me. I'm living for the higher self, spirit. That would before that would have freaked me out to say that because I was like atheist. But I now understand that spirit is not some guy in the sky that's like checking a list of are you being good or bad. I understand that I am living for my highest self that spirit the thing that has our hearts beating the thing that has us being able to project light onto things and to see them and the reason why we're on this earth that's rotating around a ball of fire whatever that is that's what i'm living for and when we tune into that we tune into that well of beauty and of joy and fulfillment and we can say yes 
And some people will find it weird and other people will be magnetically attracted to you because they're going to be like, I want some of that. Like, how do I get that free? I want to free myself so I can say yes to my message, right? So, hey, Nick, um, Christian, right? So, Rich, I want to, oh, wait. I want to end hate, self-hate, create awareness, self-love, higher levels of consciousness to free people from the prisons of their mind, help them heal, tap into their soul's purpose so I can help others heal. Yes, yes, yes. So free others of the prisons of their mind. I love that. That's one of my things too. Message. How can we get free of, hey, Pablo, how can we get free of this mind? And this is what I was talking about with my sister because she's having all this anxiety. And I said, you know what? Like you, I, you see the post that I made on Facebook yesterday. I was living, I was actually diagnosed with a panic disorder. My mind was taking me and picking me up for a ride and dragging me along with it. And I allowed it to because I was so identified with my mind. Um, but that's the thing is when you recognize that the mind is not me and you're willing to sit through whatever comes through and just to sit with it and feel it and identify that Oh, there's a sensation here. It doesn't have to be me. I don't have to let it drag me along, right? Um, it's just awareness. Kyle, you can only make the shift in the rules and what people are accustomed to seeing in the world by being the shift and doing amazing shit like you did it. Yes, my dad keeps calling me and I keep declining him because I know he's just calling to ask me a question about something at Target. I'm like, I'm on a live stream, dad. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you're right. We can't talk about it and get someone to do it, right? But sometimes, because they'll be like, that's weird. I'm not going to do it. But we liberate others by liberating ourselves. And like, who doesn't love somebody that's free? Why do you think we all love Bob Marley? I mean, his music was freaking awesome. But his music came as the channel, like, you know, inspiration. But also, he was so free. He didn't care about what other people said or what they thought or their rules about life or the way we should be living. He was totally aware that there are no rules. There are only rules that you agree to. We don't have to agree to them. We live in America. Luckily, we can sit here and we get to do a lot of stuff. Um, Nicole, money isn't coming overnight for me either. That's a belief. And now you keep repeating it. It's a work in progress. Your prices are worth it. I'm sure can't afford it right now, though. Okay, Nicole, since you're on here and you said you need a type life coach, that is all stories. That's all bullshit. Number one, you don't even know how much I cost. So you're closing yourself and blocking your own blessings. So what you have to recognize is that when we say that we can't afford something that we don't even know what the price is, you're just telling the universe that I'm just totally closed off and I know nothing about it. So in that case, you may not be at the consciousness level to work with me only because there's different levels of awareness and the people that I work with one-on-one -on -one now, not that I don't want to always help everybody, but that's why I create these live streams. And that's why I also go to my website and get my um, I am. There's a few audios on there that I am infinite. I love that audio, even though I created it. Um, it was something I channeled through and it talks about our infinite nature and quantum physics and how we can really truly open up to fully expressing our abundance. So these are things that I've been even more unlocking me um, for that. Nicole, did we? I don't remember. Um, now I'm trying to remember. I'm like, was it me? Was it my assistant? I don't even know. Um, but... Here's the deal, is that when we say the money's not coming overnight, when we say that I can't find love, when we say that I don't have friends, we are making statements that are self-fulfilling, right? So we want to step into, I'm open to receiving the money, I'm open to a new idea, an insight, a revelation that's going to provide me a way to, to have the things that I need because I know this thing is going to take me to the next place I need to go, right? <laughs> even for me guys, I'm about to publish a book. I'm about to move to the marina. I have all these things happening and it's like, whoo, it's a big, it's a lot of money that's going out, right? And it's not the amount of money that I usually spend every month. So yeah, you were saying you're only accepting like long term three months. Yeah. Yeah. Well, message me because I have some other, I, I mess, I put this out on Facebook the other day that the whole box, the black and white thing and spirit was like, you, if people reach out to you and they need your help, find ways to help them. It might not look like a specific program that I'm offering, but it will be something unique. So my thing is definitely just reach out with chat. Um, I'm sorry, because I, I have a lot of people that reach out to me on my Facebook Messenger. Let's see what Kyle said that life that live unstifled. Oh, wait, we're drawn to people that live life unstifled. Absolutely, right? It's like that essence. It just feels good. I'm like, I want to be like more like that. Teach me your ways, right? 
Poppy, when we are ready to live a brilliant life, we move mountains and make it happen. Yes. I meet so many courageous people daily. They have nothing but attitude and they make it happen. Oh my God. Poppy, you know it. <laughs> it's like, I have this thing where it's like 50% of the people that actually call me that they actually do make it work. Like they tell me how much money they have. I know their job. I know that they don't have that much income, but I understand for me that I've made investments when I didn't have it. Like I've made investments. I've gotten onto planes. I went places when I was like, oh my God, my logical mind was like, that was irresponsible. And, but when I did it, the, the benefits that came from it were so huge that I never stopped doing it. But now what I've realized is I've had this shift happen in my consciousness where it's not like, let me just do this risk and, and go down to this place of low amounts of money. Now I'm at a place like I figure out what I want, what I want to do, and then I create the income for it. So it might seem like, <laughs> it might seem like how the hell am I going to create $10,000 in the next 10 days? And you may not know, but here's what my practitioner told me that changed my life is you do know. So quit saying that you don't know and tune into the, I do know, I do know there's a part of me very deep down that does already know. How can I, how can I make this happen? Show me the way. Who do I need to speak to? Who needs my message? What kind of message do I need to share? And then it just comes through, right? Um, Kyle, fuck yeah, I made some coaching investments and wouldn't change a thing, right? And that's the thing. If that coach helps you create an extra 10000 it's costing you more money logically by not working with them. Absolutely. I think that the thing is, is that it's a scare because so many people have invested in coaches where they don't get the results. But I also think that the people that are scared to make those investments try to discount and they find like the cheaper, not cheaper, uh, lower cost coaches and try to discount their way into being them best selves rather than just investing in the whatever feels right to them and whatever speaks to them and figuring out like the money is going to be replenished, right? But there also takes a level my dog's over here chewing up all types of stuff. It also takes a level of trust in self, understanding the universal laws that we are supported, but we are supported by whatever we believe. So if you believe that you do not have access to the infinite, right? And that a part of you is not infinite. If you've never closed your eyes and paid attention to the fact that there's this like crazy vastness and there's information that's always coming in then you're not connected to the, to the truth that there's a part of you that is infinite, right? So a lot of the work that I do with my clients is not processing. I don't wanna talk about stuff. There's nothing to really talk about. Like I wanna know where you're coming from so that I can work with you, but it's a lot of experiential. It's a lot of diving into here. What are you feeling here? What are, What's coming through for you? And really my work is supporting you as you like take off all the crap that you've been bracketing and saying like, I'm not gonna do this now, I don't wanna focus on this now, I'm gonna pretend this never happened to me, I'm gonna pretend this doesn't hurt. All that stuff you've bracketed, I hold your hand while you take it off the shelf, look at it and give it love. And then you decide, this is who I am and really claim your truth. When you do that, magic happens because it goes back to that, as Kyle said, the unstifled life. Kyle, not saying maybe like, oh, there's the maybe later people who live life saying maybe later to their purpose right? And then it'll haunt you. And then Kyle, not saying maybe later always means that. Um, others, oh wait, there's other times that is awesome to say maybe later. Yeah, there's, well, and it's also going into what really speaks to you, right? When you have a big hit of inspiration and you're like, I'm supposed to do this. Most of the times when you call a coach, you're supposed to work with them. You're supposed to. You've had that divine inspiration. You've gotten the universal the evolutionary nudge that's like, go, 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 go over there. But what happens is the mind comes in, the mind's like, I don't know, should I, should I spend that money? Um, my mom and dad always said it was stupid to make this investment. Should I spend this money? You end up calling your best friend that doesn't even invest in themselves and isn't even in a personal development. And they're telling you, oh my God, that much. And then you close down and you go back into shrinking, right? But what about your message? Is your message for that? Let's see. Um, Poppy, I can already tell I'm going to like this, this story. I didn't eat anything but porridge and peanuts for nine months so that I could work with my coach. No excuses, none. Nothing is more important than our own healthy mind. We are teachers, <coughs> examples, and mentors to others. Therefore, we owe it to ourselves and everyone to make sure we are the good ones. Yes, 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 yes. And who are we 
to not say yes to the gifts we've been given. And if we haven't learned how to unlock ourselves, and here's the thing that we have to understand. The reason why it's so important to have mentors, coaches, to invest in you know different events and things like this is because there are parts of yourself that you haven't been able to see, right? Like, I can't see here. I can't see the back of my neck. I could maybe go in with a mirror and another mirror and I could do this. There's parts of me that I can't see, right? So it's so easy. Someone could walk behind me and be like, let me just do this for you. I'm going to show you. The other thing is this, is like, there are parts within ourselves, and this is why there's quick shifts with my clients in the calls, is that there's parts within ourselves that have hurt us for so long or that hurt so bad at the time that it happened that we had stuffed it away and we said, I don't want to see this anymore. This is no good to me. I'm going to forget it never happened and I'm putting it away. You put it away. Your mind is so smart because your mind wants to protect you, so it keeps it away. What it doesn't realize is that those little kinks that it's created in your psyche because you feel unworthy, you feel like you don't deserve good things now, that is still affecting you. Even though you've taken that little ball of crap and you've stuffed it away, that little unworthiness is still already seeped in and it's done its thing. So until you're willing to look at it and take it off the shelf and be like, I'm willing to pour my love into this, but I know it's going to hurt, then why like until you do that you're going to feel the effects the other thing is having the courage and vulnerability to share your story and really be you if i didn't connect with myself in the silence in the place of really knowing my truth then i would have never been able to share who i was all of it right like the things that i just wrote in that book i never could have imagined myself sharing it five years ago because it was so painful and i hid a lot of it and i didn't even tell people about it so now that i've unleashed it and it's all on this book and it's going out to the world it's so liberating so i just like basically took it out of me and i'm like this is not mine this is not mine to keep anymore right and it feels amazing let me go back and read these things nicole i consider myself an infinite receiver but with what you're saying, you really do have to use logic. I can't commit to a program with you going into it telling you I can't pay you, but let's start, right? Um, okay, but what's logic have to do with that? It's like if you don't have money, sometimes you don't have the money right in the moment. If you work with the universal laws and you are open to receiving it, right? And when you say I'm an infinite receiver, but... It's like that old funky word, but, right? Opening up to, and I for, and like I said, I, I don't remember our conversation or what we spoke about. You might have re reached out briefly, but I, I get a lot of messages because I'm always inviting people in to message me. Um, I don't remember what you do, but if you have a business where you sell things and you, are, you understand your gifts, you can ask, how can I share my gifts? Who needs my gifts? How can I share this and express this in a way that I can exchange it for financial currency, for money, right? We have to take the emotion out of money and look at it as like, I have a gift. This is something someone needs. How can I exchange it with them and I can make money from it? And we can expand it or contract it depending on what whatever we need in our life, right? Um, so logic, that's not logic. That's a choice that I get to make. Um, I can say no or I can say yes. I could say get this much money and then we'll talk. You know, there's things that we can do. But for you to say that I can't get money or for anyone to say I can't get money, like I always use this example, kind of joking, kind of not, is there someone standing at 7-Eleven down the street from my house asking for dollars? He'll probably make a couple hundred dollars today. There's always access to money. It's willing. how willing are we to really reach out and say yes to the resources? Who do we know that would be willing to invest money in us as a loan so that we could invest in ourselves? And am I going to make financial return from this? Am I going to invest in something that's going to teach me to, you know, three times, five times, ten times my business? If so, I can't afford not to do it. Let me figure out what I need to do, who I need to ask, right? So it's not always coming from that one channel where you say money's coming overnight. Coming overnight from where? What if it didn't have to come from anywhere specific and you were just totally open to it coming from unexpected sources and that you thought about who in my life would support me, right? So there's just different ways. Hope that helps. Poppy, there's one in 400 trillion chance that we are exist. Hello, unleash your power. Yes, I'm going to like that. Um, Bushra, meditation and silence in the mind actually gets you the calmness and to get the answers that are within us. Yes, 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 yes. Learn to trust yourself more than just judge yourself and be kind to yourself and that the least that we can do. Absolutely. But is the universal deleter. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> um, my coach told me that. Like, I was addicted to but. 
you always say but there doesn't have to be a but what if you just allowed your mind to go there and just stop trying to undercut it right you're right i'm thinking small because of my insecurities my business has been become booming actually and i've been unconsciously damaging it sometimes feeling undeserving of it all i'm in my own way my mind has been a battlefield today be gentle on yourself nicole here's the deal all of us have been like that with ourselves but all you have to do is now you just had the insight, right? How beneficial is that? So now you know you've been looking through life like this, and now we just expand our awareness, right? We expand, hey, Sarah, we just expand it and know that there are resources that we're not aware of. There's always people that need our, our services. Now you might be selling a $5,000 program and maybe it's not selling. Maybe that's not the channel that you need to keep taking. Maybe you need to sell a $1,000 something. Maybe there's people that you want to help for 300 bucks. Maybe there's something. I don't know. I'm not you. But if you turn within, like I'm saying, and figure out what's my message, and you know your message to people, you know that there's people that you want to help, all you have to do is know that and step out from a place of serving. You shift that inner world and your outer world also is reflecting that, right? So I don't know where my family is. They are taking so long. I, obviously, they did try to call me twice while I'm on here. And Pablo's over there chewing stuff up. But um, I'm waiting for them to go to the beach. And I hope you all have a be beautiful day. Tomorrow, I'm going to Disneyland. I don't know if I'm going to be able to um, do a live stream. But hey, if you're listening to this and you want to work with me, if you want to tap into the infinite self, if you want to close... I shouldn't say close, take away what, however you've closed yourself off, take those things off the shelf, unbracket them, unpack them and learn to love them so you can truly be unleashed. Then message me. One of my goals is before my book is published, um, before my birthday in May, I want to help as many women as I can. Obviously it's going to have to be in a way that works for me and feels good for me. But what I am doing is it doesn't just have to be the three and six month program. I am opening up to exploring, you know, something else. I'm open to it. But I just want to make sure that in the next two months, and I don't know, maybe one day Spirit will tell me, yeah, Nicole, message me and we'll set up a call. Um, because I'll forget if I, because I, I get off and my mind is going a thousand um, things. <laughs> um, and Sarah, by the way, I'm getting back to you. Sarah was in my inbox earlier. She's one of my one-on-one -on -one clients. So, what I was going to say is maybe this will change in two weeks. I don't know. I really obey whatever I'm feeling in my heart. And, um, you know, when I did that meditation on Monday or Tuesday, whatever day it was, and I got the download that I need to be of service and to get out of my ego, that that's really where I'm living now. So I'm living in that place of if I have something, if I have food and someone's hungry, who am I to say no? It might not be a good fit, right? Maybe you're gluten free and the food I have is not, right? So maybe it's not totally a good fit. It's not for everybody. But what I'm saying is that it's a little bit more flex until I get a download that it should be otherwise. So anyway, guys, also, just as a reminder, go to the website and get the I Am Audio series. It's really good. It's really, it wasn't even me. It's like it flowed through, but it really provided a lot of good things for people. And it, if you're feeling a little closed off and away from the infinite nature of yourself, the I Am Audio series does that. It's I am worthy. I am supported. I am loved. I am infinite. I forget the other one. There's one more. But anyway, guys, sending you lots of my love. I'm going to go to the beach right now, and um, I hope you have a beautiful day. Bye. Bye, Poppy. Hey, Eric. But I got to go. Bye.